Lent, chapter uh, week four, Sunday, Office of Readings. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Who can climb the Lord's mountain or stand in his holy place? Psalm 24. The Lord's is the earth in its fullness, the world and all its peoples. It is he who set it on the seas, on the waters he made it firm. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The man with clean hands and pure heart, who desires not worthless things, who has not sworn so as to deceive his neighbor. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and reward from the God who saves him. Such are the men who seek him, seek the face of the God of Jacob. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors. Let him enter, the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, the mighty, the valiant, the Lord, the valiant in war. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors. Let him enter the King of glory. Who is he, the King of glory? He, the Lord of armies, he is the King of glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. When your son was unjustly condemned, Lord God, and surrounded by the impious, he cried out to you, and you set him free. Watch over your people as the treasure of your heart, and guide their steps along the safe paths, that they may see your face. Who can climb the Lord's mountain or stand in his holy place? Bless our God, you nations of the world. He has given us life. Psalm 66. The Lord is risen and all people have been brought by him to the Father. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. O oh, sing to the glory of his name. O oh, render him glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous your deeds because of the greatness of your strength. Your enemies cringe before you. Before you all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Come and see the works of God, tremendous his deeds among men. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river, dry shod. Let our joy then be in him. He rules forever by his might. His eyes keep watch over the nations. Let rebels not rise against him. O peoples, bless our God. Let the voice of his praise resound of the God who gave life to our souls and kept our feet from stumbling. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You led us, God, into the snare. You laid a heavy burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. You went through fire and through water, but then you brought us relief. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Bless our God, you nations of the world. He has given us life. Listen to me, all you who revere God. Let me tell you what great things he has done for me. Burnt offering I bring to your house. To you I will pay my vows, the vows which my lips have uttered, which my mouth spoke in my distress. I will offer burnt offerings of fatlings, with the smoke of burning rams. I will offer bullocks and goats. Come and hear all who fear God. I will tell what he did for my soul. 
To him I cried aloud with high praise ready on my tongue. If there had been evil in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has heeded the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who did not reject my prayer, nor withhold his love from me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Almighty Father, in the death and resurrection of your own Son, you brought us through the waters of baptism to the shores of new life. By those waters and the fire of the Holy Spirit, you have given each of us consolation. Accept our sacrifice of praise. May our lives be a total offering to you, and may we deserve to enter your house and there with Christ praise your unfailing power. Listen to me, all you who revere God. Let me tell you what great things God has done for me. Lord, your words are spirit and life. You have the words of eternal life. Our first reading is from the book of Leviticus, chapter 8, verses 1 through 17 and chapter 9, verses 23 through 24. The Lord said to Moses, Take Aaron and his sons, together with the vestments, the anointing oil, the bullock for a sin offering, the two rams, and the basket of unleavened food. Then assemble the whole community at the entrance of the meeting tent. And Moses did as the Lord had commanded. When the community had assembled at the entrance of the meeting tent, Moses told them what the Lord had ordered to be done. Bringing forward Aaron and his sons, he first washed them with water. Then he put the tunic on Aaron, girded him with the sash, clothed him with the robe, placed the ephod on him, and girded him with the embroidered belt of the ephod, fastening it around him. He then set the breastplate on him with the Urim and the Thummim in it and put the mitre on his head, attaching the gold plate, the sacred diadem over the front of the mitre at his forehead as the Lord had commanded him to do. Taking the anointing oil, Moses anointed and consecrated the dwelling with all that was in it. Then he sprinkled some of this oil seven times on the altar and anointed the altar with all its appurtenances, and the laver with his base, thus consecrating them. He also poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head, thus consecrating him. Moses likewise brought forward Aaron's sons, clothed them with tunics, girded them with sashes, and put turbans on them, as the Lord had commanded him to do. When he had brought forward the bullet for a sin offering, Aaron and his sons laid their hands on its head. Then Moses slaughtered it, and taking some of its blood with his finger, he put it on the horns around the altar, thus purifying the altar. He also made atonement for the altar by pouring out the blood at its base when he consecrated it. Taking all the fat that was over, the inner organs, as well as the lobe of the liver and the two kidneys, with their fat, Moses burned them on the altar. The bullock, however, with his hide and flesh, and offal, he burned in the fire outside the camp, as the Lord had commanded him to do. Aaron then raised his hands over the people and blessed them. When he came down from offering, the sin offering in holocaust and peace offering, Moses and Aaron went into the meeting tent. On coming out again, bless the people. Then the glory of the Lord was revealed to all the people. Fire came forth from the Lord's presence and consumed the holocaust and the remnants of the fat on the altar. Seeing this, all the people cried out and fell prostrate. 
Under the old covenant, there were many priests because death prevented them from continuing in office. But Christ has an eternal priesthood because he remains forever. The Lord raised up Aaron, conferred on him the priesthood of the people, and blessed him with great honor. But Christ has an eternal priesthood because he remains forever. Our second reading is from a treatise on John by St. Augustine, Bishop. Christ is the way to the light, the truth, and the life. The Lord tells us, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In these few words, he gives a command and makes a promise. Let us do what he commands so that we may not blush to covet what he promises and to hear him say on the day of judgment, I lay down certain conditions for obtaining my promises. Have you fulfilled them? If you say, what did you command, Lord our God? He will tell you, I commanded you to follow me. You asked for advice on how to enter into life. What life, if not the life about which it is written, with you is the fountain of life? Let us do now what he commands. Let us follow in the footsteps of the Lord. Let us throw off the chains that prevent us from following him. Who can throw off these shackles without the aid of the one addressed in these words? You have broken my chains. Another psalm says of him, The Lord frees those in chains. The Lord raises up the downcast. Those who have been freed and raised up follow the light. The light they follow speaks to them. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness. The Lord gives light to the blind. Brethren, that light shines on us now, for we have had our eyes anointed with the eye salve of faith. His saliva was mixed with earth to anoint the man born blind. We are of Adam's stock, blind from our birth. We need him to give us light. He mixed saliva with earth, and so it was prophesied. Truth has sprung up from the earth. He himself has said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We shall be in possession of the truth when we see face to face. This is his promise to us. Who would dare to hope for something that God in his goodness did not choose to promise or bestow? We shall see face to face. The apostle says, Now I know in part, now obscurely through a mirror, but then face to face. John the Apostle says in one of his letters, Dearly beloved, we are now children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. We know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This is a great promise. If you love me, follow me. I do love you, you protest, but how do I follow you? If the Lord your God said to you, I am the truth and the life, in your desire for truth, in your love for life, you would certainly ask him to show you the way to reach them. You would say to yourself, truth is a great reality. Life is a great reality. If only it were possible for my soul to find them. I hate the ways of falsehood. Your word is a lantern which guides my steps, a light for the pathway before me. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Your word is a lantern which guides my steps, 
a light for the pathway before me. Closing prayer. Father of peace, we are joyful in your word, your son, Jesus Christ, who reconciles us to you. Let us hasten toward Easter with the eagerness of faith and love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.